This video was made in partnership with Bill Gates and his new book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster. Hi, Trace here. I'm at the Alta Wind Energy Center outside of Mojave, California. My heart is beating really fast because they actually kind of freak me out because look how big they are. There are wind machines everywhere in every direction that we look and they are generating as much electricity as two and a half typical coal plants and they're doing it without any emissions whatsoever. These are a huge tool, both literally and figuratively, in our fight against global warming and climate change. But there is so much people don't know about these things, so I bought a Lego set. I called my friend Nick Uhas so we could build a wind tunnel, and I tried it for myself. And y'all, it was an adventure. So let's kick into it. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> like my brother Inigo Montoya said, we have to go back to the beginning. I love Lego. If you follow my social media, you already know this. A while back, I thought it'd be really cool if we built a Lego windmill set and tried to generate electricity with it. Whoa, it's generating like wind. <laughs> and what is the difference between something like this and this? Engineering, obviously, size for sure, but in practicality, they're actually not that different. And a while back, I stumbled upon this thing called the wind power equation, and it looks like this. The wind power equation tells engineers just how much energy we can harvest from a windmill of a specific size. The possible power is half the density of the swept area times the wind speed cubed. It helps us determine where we would want to put a wind farm. So what better way to explore the power of the wind than build this Lego set, fit it into the wind power equation, and figure out if it works. First though, I'd need to retrofit, remodel, and improvise. The original Lego set is battery powered. It uses a motor to actually turn the blades which means the whole wind energy thing in the original set is all for show. But there is a solution for this, Lego set 9688. It is a renewable energy technic set that comes with a generator and multimeter so we can see the output of the experiments that you were supposed to build with the set. The thing is, it was discontinued in 2010 but I found one on eBay and I won it. <laughs> it arrived in the box, it was still taped shut. Uh, I had to open that, sorry collectors. It's for science, I swear, I swear. <laughs> I completely re-geared and reworked the head of the set to fit this large generator inside of it. And then I headed out into the Alta Wind Energy Center to actually try it in the wild. All power plants use the same technique to make electricity. You turn a turbine almost always with a gas. Coal, natural gas, and nuclear will use steam. Hydro uses flowing water. Wind uses flowing air. As the generator turns, the mechanical energy spins magnets through a coiled wire, and that creates electricity. And if all of these generators all work the same way, why are we constantly mining and burning these one-off pollutants if we can just harvest it from nature? And that is the ethos of wind energy. According to my anemometer, the wind is gusting over 45 miles an hour. That is a lot. I set it up out here in Alta and... Yes! Yeah! It tur- oh. Well, it wasn't windy enough to get going, but it sure was enough to knock it over and smash it on the ground while the camera was rolling. So I think our little Lego can do better. We just need a more controlled lab scenario. Perhaps the gusts were too much for it. And also on top of that, I think the blades might be poorly designed for this. As they say in late 20th century cinema, if you want something done right, do it yourself. So I'm gonna pick up. <laughs> if you want something done right, do it yourself. Hey, Nick. What's up, Trace? I uh, have a question for you, it's a little weird. I have got a Lego windmill and I would like to test it, but I don't have a wind tunnel. Do you happen to have a wind tunnel? I do not happen to have one, but I do know how to build one, kind of, in my garage, I think. But I feel like with our brains together, we can do it. Awesome, I will rebuild the Lego set and I will be over to your house ASAP. Yeah, perfect, dude. All right, cool, see you then. So for version two of our windmill, I made a more robust base to the upright. I don't want it smashing again after we build the wind tunnel. In the wild, these giant machines are made of huge tubes of steel with fiberglass blades that are light and strong. And inside the windmills are these gearboxes, drive shafts, wind monitors, and other electronics to make sure that the thing is running efficiently, but also safely. 
The LEGO one doesn't have any of that, and in fact, the generator is directly connected to the blades, so I definitely want it to not smash. Also in the wild, these things are super powerful. If you visit the US wind turbine database, you can see every single windmill in the United States. The one that I was standing in front of at the beginning of the video is a Vestas V93MW. That means it generates three megawatts. And when I was standing in front of it with 45 mile an hour gusts, it was likely generating near peak power. That's assuming 40% efficiency. Of course, it might be more than that. We haven't actually talked about efficiency yet, but that is the clincher in this whole power equation. In 1919, German physicist Albert Betz calculated the max efficiency of a windmill, it's called Betz's limit or Betz's law, at 59%. So put simply, the most perfect windmill in the world would still only harvest 59% of the energy of the wind passing through its blades. And most wind would actually go around, under, or over. That is how we know, by the way, that turbines don't slow down the wind. That is a myth busted right there. As trillions of kilograms of mass shift around plains, mountains, oceans, and forests, we feel that movement as wind. Thinking that it slows down the wind is sort of like thinking that a rocket taking off is slowing down the Earth. Sure, yeah, it is, but so imperceptively relative to the Earth's mass that it's basically nothing. But back to efficiency. Some wind farms peak at 45% efficient. If you add that into the wind power equation, engineers can use wind data to estimate how much power an area can generate, or how efficient a single plastic model might be. So that's when I headed to Nick's workshop to try and generate some actual electricity. So I met up with my friend Nick Juhas, who builds all sorts of stuff for his YouTube channel. I figured maybe he can help me out. I sure can, Trey. So we're gonna build a wind tunnel today, and I thought that we would use this setup with these tables since we already have this kind of like perfect little base. It's perfect, it's almost even the right height, which is great. And then we're gonna use this material right here. This is just regular insulation. Uh -oh. And I figured we're gonna make this box basically on another side. So two feet, two feet, two feet. We're gonna put box fans over here. And we're yep. gonna stack them. Uh, and we're gonna push as much wind as we can through our wind tunnel. We're gonna get something. We're gonna yeah. get something out of this. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. First step, getting the material. Oh, right, yeah. I'm a blacksmith and an Eagle Scout, so I definitely am handy, but Nick knows what he's doing. Nick is super familiar with building things like fire tornadoes and cool science stuff, so I'm tapping into his expertise for this. Basically, we're trying to get a constant wind speed so we can learn the efficiency of this windmill and nail down some blade design. A wind tunnel is literally what it sounds like. It's a tunnel of wind. So once we set up all the fans, we set up the anemometer to figure out how fast it was going, and we thought, we can do better than that. So after a quick rearranging of the fans. Is this your uh, fire tornado system? <laughs> <laughs> we were ready for attempt number one. And yet, just like in Mojave, nothing happened. We're getting two and a half to three meters per second of wind speed, which is like almost seven miles an hour. Not a lot, but it should be enough to get something to happen. The renewable energy kit comes with these little scooped blade things, and that's what you're supposed to build their windmill for their experiment with. So let's try those. Boom. So now we should be able to catch a little bit more wind. We think. <laughs> We're generating electricity from the electricity. Dude, it is dude. <laughs> yes. I did not expect it to actually work. Dude, it's rocking, man. Look at that go. With a multimeter and the anemometer, plus some reference to online Lego materials, we can determine that this motor <laughs> is fairly efficient at generating electricity, which still blows my mind. Yeah. Taking all that together, this windmill is probably, big probably here, in the neighborhood of 25% efficient at converting mechanical energy into electricity. And that might not sound like a lot, but it's actually way more than you think. Coal operates at 33% efficiency. That's way less than wind and only just above Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Excepting hydroelectric, nothing bests wind for efficiency. But before we get into that, let me just revel in the fact that this worked for a minute, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, 
Was that not just the coolest freaking thing that you've ever seen? The most important thing that we can learn from playing with wind power is this energy is just out there. It's out there all the time. If we humans can efficiently harvest some of that constantly renewing system driven by the sun warming our atmosphere, we would be one step closer to a totally renewable society. Any light that you're turning on would just be powered by the by the sun, honestly. We're just capturing it in different ways. I, I still just cannot believe that this thing worked thanks to these little teeny scoops here. Well, now it's off balance, but either way, that is crazy. In big farms, the front turbines actually capture the majority of the wind, causing turbulence and decreasing the output of the ones behind them. If you space them out though, the wind has a chance to pick up again and can increase the efficiency overall of the system. You can see this in your own life if you ever stood next to the wind coming off the ocean or a flat plain near the mountains. Yet another nail in the coffin of wind power slows down the wind. Wind picks up speed if left without a break in the landscape. It naturally does this because there's just so much mass above us pushing things down and moving things around with the energy of the sun. I can't say it enough. This balance of where to put them is of course being studied. More research is needed to know how far apart or close together to do that. But speaking of research, let's talk a bit about climate change. It's happening. The science is settled, y'all. It's serious. And we need a cross-disciplinary plan to solve our climate crisis. And this week, someone actually wrote one, Bill Gates. This video was created in partnership with Bill Gates and was partially inspired by his new book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster. You can find out more about how we can all work together to avoid the climate disaster in the link below or here on the screen. Here's what we know though. Carbon dioxide emissions continue to increase, as does severe weather, sea level rise, and overall global temperatures. It is again likely gonna be one of the hottest years in history. Fossil fuels and the release of carbon into our atmosphere is what got us into this situation, but we can get ourselves out. It's not too late. Wind power is one of the bricks in the new foundation of energy economy. Along with solar, nuclear, geothermal, and more, we're gonna need new technologies, better ideas, and bigger ideas too. It's gonna take all of us. In Bill Gates' new book, he lays out what he's learned making strategic investments and supporting innovative missions and probing the barriers of science to fix the climate crisis. Things like efficiency, decarbonization, and switching us to renewable energy sources. There are a lot of levers to success here, and we're gonna need to pull all of them, and some of them harder than others. Either way, Check out the book. You can use the link in the description or on the screen and let me know what you think. I thought it was really, really good. Thanks again to Gates for helping with this video. I also wanna thank Nancy from the California Wind Energy Association. She really helped me get my head around this concept. What a great little community, thanks y'all. Now that we know that this works and that you can actually generate electricity using Lego, y'all. Wind energy has a lot of myths. It doesn't slow down the wind. Yes, the blades do and can make noise as the wind blows around them, but that's adjustable. We just sacrifice some power generation abilities. They've come a long way in the last couple of decades. Now they can not only pitch the blades and change the angles of the head, they can do all sorts of things to generate different amounts of power and also make them louder or quieter, depending on where they're put in our society, out to sea or on a mountaintop. Yes, sometimes older models do need de-icing, but the newer models, they've invented nano coatings to cover the blades that keep water from pooling up and getting ice on them. They even have heating systems built in using the energy that they get from the rotation to combat those issues. Even though windmills have been around for thousands of years, the Persians used them to mill grain and pump water and also air condition their homes. The windmill that we know it today, this is fairly new technology. Like any new technology, of course there are gonna be barriers and boundaries to these. The mechanical windmill that you recognize from farms was only invented in the late 19th century. As I was making this video, the US got hit with a huge winter storm, and these once in a decade storms have knocked out the power in Texas several times. Climate change sucks, no matter where you live. Some studies say windmills actually perform better in the winter because it tends to be windier. I have a whole video on that. Thanks to the sun, wind blows on our planet all the time. Let's use this unlimited resource to get some free energy, and then we can figure out solar on cloudy days or wind when it's not windy. Those kind of energy solutions come next. These problems are solvable. We just have to stop talking ourselves out of trying. Finally, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and for subscribing if you saw my video on Tom Scott's channel about poppy seed bagels. Y'all, I, I cried when that video came out because your tweets and your comments and your likes and shares were incredible. I've been making stuff for a long time and the success of that video made me feel just so validated. So thank you. I'm Trace. 
try building this at home if you can get a hand on the sets. And tweet at me if you have questions about how we put all this together. Maybe we can do a full Q&A if you're interested. Let me know in the comments. I love you all. Keep your hands clean and I'll see you in the future.